So like we we two, we will we'll take turn to ask you. So sure. maybe like if if she asks, or you can just look directly <laughs> okay, here okay. so that the eyes can be of course. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So let's go to the first question. Uh, as we ask that, like so many people follow you on Twitter, and and how do you think like the perception of people in social media right now see like the different of Taiwan before and now during the COVID nineteen. Yeah, before the COVID, I think uh, people follow us uh, for the bubble tea, I guess, <laughs> <laughs> and also uh, our work on say gender equality, uh, marriage equality, and things like that were considered pioneers there. But more and more, uh, I think after the COVID, people are following us to look at the fundamentals of democracy because in Taiwan we're very rare uh, in the world who managed to counter the coronavirus, the pandemic, with no lockdown and deepening the democracy, and also counter the infodemic. That's the This information crisis was no takedown again, deepening democracy. Mm -hmm. So I think people are looking at Taiwan as something that exemplifies this way of thinking democracy as a type of technology that everybody can improve. That's our new message. Mm -hmm. And you always mention about open data and uh, the digital innovation. How do you think like all of these things can help you and Taiwan in order to to fight with COVID 19 Yeah, uh, the social innovation in Taiwan, uh, I call it. It's everyone's. Business with everyone's help. So instead of just the people in the health ministries or the Central Epidemic Command Center uh, working on those top-down policies, actually in Taiwan, just last year alone, we have more than two million calls to one nine two two, the toll-free number, not only to ask for explanations but also to voice people's ideas about how to manage the coronavirus better. So we learned about a lot of innovative ways, like using traditional rice cookers to clean. The mask, uh, killing the virus without destroying the mask, or people feedback of their, for example, young boy calling and saying, uh, "All I get is pink medical mask, but all the boys on my class have navy blue mask. I don't want to wear it to school." And the very next day on the CECC press conference, everybody wore pink, and so the boy suddenly became the most hit boy in his class. And so this very Fast, very agile iteration cycle. I think that's what the social innovation really gave us the trust. From the government to the citizen, and some of the citizens do trust back. Mm. And in order to build this kind of trust, to trust like between the two party, the mm. government and, and people, mutual trust, yes. do you think like how how you can really do that to make a trust mm. between two? Because uh, I know that many of my friends mentioned mm. about Taiwan has experienced about SARS before, mm. right? right? Do you think is that one of the the main factor that uh, the government can really trust the people that they're gonna give you a, a mm. gonna collaborate with with the government? Mm. Uh, that's one of the things uh, there, of course, because people don't want to go back to mm -hmm. SARS 1.0, where the communication was very chaotic, where we have to barricade the entire hospital unannounced. Uh, nobody wants lockdowns and things like that. Of course, that helps because it helps aligning the citizenry and the government, public sector toward common values. But also equally important is this idea of broadband as human right. So we know that no matter which corner you are in, even on the top of Taiwan, the highest mountain, you're still guaranteed to have bidirectional broadband. That is to say, not only do the internet reaches everyone, it also listens to everyone, so that people can start live streaming. Everybody could be just a YouTuber, <laughs> a, a media producer, so that we focus not only on the literacy, which is about understanding the public messages, but also about the competence, the media competence, the digital competence, the data competence that makes everyone a data producer and a media producer that can talk about what they feel uh, and what they experience on the moment in the here and now. So that everyone else can also listen. That's also very important. Mm -hmm. So now let's talk about Taiwan can help. Uh, do you think like how Taiwan can help can really uh, make a collaboration between people and the government? Yeah, Taiwan can help is a trending hashtag, mm -hmm. uh, and like any hashtag, it's not something that any particular government ministry or any particular minister uh, can claim uh, to be their own. Indeed, the leading uh, website for Taiwan can help, Taiwan can help that us. It's not even a government website. It's just a website that's registered by a bunch of YouTubers. Uh, so just as I was mentioning, anyone with a camera, anyone with a phone can make their messages heard. And I think Taiwan can help that us exemplifies that idea in getting the raw materials, the footage, and so on, even from our then vice president uh, Chen Jianren, the top expert in epidemiology. He wrote a textbook to record an online massive open course for everyone on the planet about. 
uh, epidemiology and Taiwan's measure, what we call the Taiwan model. And then the YouTubers across all the different nations just took those um, ideas and materials in the commons and remix their own public service messages, which are also collected on Taiwan can help that us. And the website is entirely crowdfunded too. Mm. And how do you think like Taiwan can help right now can really promote Taiwan and like to be uh, and, um, and how about the Taiwan position in the post COVID-19 world? Yeah, as I mentioned, uh, we think of democracy as something that everyone can improve on. It's not just about getting a vote every four years, like three bits per person every four years. Uh, it's not this low bandwidth democracy only. Of course, that's still important. But we add to that, for example, the presidential hackathon, which for the past couple of years have international collaboration on sustainability using civic technologies, or the sandboxes where the new regulatory ideas about, say, self-driving vehicles, about 5G, about all sort of platform economy ideas can work with the social sector not just for the society, with the society, or the e-petition platform join.gov.tw, which has inspired similar designs all across East Asia. I think all these are the concrete contributions that Taiwan is already making to the world, and we're collecting that into our national action plan in open government that we're going to share with the world in a couple months. Mm. And can you talk a bit about the situation in Taiwan right now? Because I think like from the first to until now, it's kind COVID-19 is kind of like unstoppable, the situation. And how do you think like in order to fight with COVID-19? But the, the most important thing is also to sustain the way that you deal with COVID-19 and to make trust among people. And how do you think like you can still sustain that thing until now? And yeah, it's not just sustaining, it's regenerative, right? Uh, mm. People have renewed interest in public policy because I guess of the cute spokesdog Zong Chai that motivates even very young people to learn epidemiology. Uh, the very cute dog says, wear a mask to protect your own face against your own unwashed hands. Now that's a message that even very young people could understand because it speaks to the very basic fact that the soap hand sanitizers and so on are there to protect you against yourself. And so uh, these memes, these internet messages that gets remixed and spreads uh, virally, <laughs> I think are like inoculations of the mind. Once people get exposed to those ideas, they're much more active citizens. They're no longer just subjects, but they could also participate uh, in contributing their own um, knowledge, competence and so on in getting the messages, the right epidemiological messages across. So it's not just about sustainability, this is about co-creation and prosperity in democratic governance. Mm -hmm. So uh, how do you think Taiwan's role now can lead Taiwan to like which kind of position in the world of post-COVID-19? Mm -hmm. Yeah, in Taiwan, uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, what we're doing is that we counter the pandemic with no lockdown and counter the infodemic with no takedown. And so we stand as an example that there is no false dilemma or trade-off between human right and social democracy on one side uh, and the uh, counter-pandemic and economic growth on the other. Too often, uh, before the vaccine gets uh, <laughs> rolled out to people, too often many jurisdictions thought that they have to choose one or the other. But Taiwan, we not only have record number of people returning to Taiwan, but also international citizens who didn't have a residence or citizenship in Taiwan who apply to the Taiwan Code Gold Card uh, or through other kind of entrepreneurship visa and so on to choose to stay in Taiwan, to be also Taiwanese and enjoy not only the health care, but also also the co-creation of democracy and innovation. So I think this is the message from Taiwan to the world in that if you do democracy well, if you listen and trust the citizens, you don't have to make false zero-sum trade-offs. Mm. Do you have anything to add? Yeah, I think it's already Yes, I think sorry. Uh, but may I ask a little bit more sure, about because we're gonna be in the state of distribution that the vaccine, right? Yeah, right? And you already did well in like the distribution of masks. Right. And how do you think like you're gonna apply a, a humor over rumor mm -hmm. to to the distribution of vaccine? Yeah, I think the CECC have always said that this is a matter of choice. 
-hmm. And so people can choose uh, which vendors, whether they prefer a domestic mat vendor or a international vendor across the international choices, uh, which particular do they prefer. Now to respect citizens' preferences while managing the logistics calls for a lot of digital public infrastructure to support it. So again, we would use the very advanced digitized national health insurance system so that everyone with an IC card, which is universal coverage to not only citizens but also residents, can register such a choice to the system in the NHIA, much like you can choose to pre-order your mask or collect one from the pharmacies or even save that and dedicate it to the international community, all from the very simple NHI app. So stay tuned and download the NHI app. Okay, okay I think that's pretty good. Okay, that's okay. it then. Thank you, well, yes, thank you very it. good thank questions. Thank you so much. Live yeah. long and prosper. <laughs> okay, so. Uh -huh. uh, yeah. So, uh, let's do you um, want to that on? Okay. Um, okay, so we're going to finish this. So can we take a picture of it? 